going on guys? Uh, welcome back to the Inline JDM YouTube channel. Of course, I'm Noah. Uh, and today, as you can probably tell, I am driving the 89 Supra. So, I'm actually on my way to put some gas in it currently. And what I thought I would do is just kind of go over uh, a few things and basically just do a, as stereotypical as it sounds of five things I hate and five things I love about the car. I might, depending on how long they get, I might separate them into two videos. Um, so part one might be likes or dislikes first and then obviously part two is going to be the latter. Um, but yeah, let's, let's dive right into it. So first, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start with dislikes. Uh, you know, you always like to get the bad news first, so I'm going to do that with this. The first thing, and these are in no particular order, mind you, just five things that I have found to dislike over the years of ownership. So the first one I'm going to start with, make sure my windows are up, there we go. They were. Uh, so first one is... <laughs> the leaky Targa. As you guys probably have watched my previous videos, uh, this car is a Targa top, and the roof does leak. Uh, the windows leak in a couple spots when I go through the car wash especially, and that's, you probably can't tell, but it's right here where the Targa and the actual A-pillar meet. Uh, it leaks there on both sides while in the car wash and also drips in back here. And I know that's probably just old seals, and I haven't replaced those yet, but uh, at some point I will, and when I do, I'll probably make a video about it and how to do it. Second thing I don't like about the car is the stock 7M. Now, when you look at it as a whole, instead of just this inline six cylinder engine. The 7M has a lot of potential. A lot of potential. Now, and, that, and that's all thanks to the aftermarket community. They have fixes for just about every single problem that this engine had. But looking at it just in its stock form, the biggest problem with these, and I know you've probably heard this before, was the head gasket. About midway through other problems too but I can't really think of any major ones off the top of my head that were like a probably general problem for everybody uh, obviously the head gasket is something a lot of people have issues with uh, obviously towards the end of the run of them producing the 7m they did figure it out so the later models I'm guessing in like 92 those cars should all be fine uh, any owners that still have a relatively stock uh, MK3 platform in the later years, you know, 89 through 92, feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know if you guys have had head gasket issues. I'm really curious to know if they, uh, if the stock motors still had those issues or if they were able to fix it with just porking down the heads a little better. Uh, number three, that back window. I know it may seem kind of stupid that it's just a back window. So you might be asking yourself, what's the problem with the back window? Well, I have mentioned it in my other videos before of why I highly dislike the back window. And for those of you who haven't watched my previous videos, here's why. The AC in this car works fantastic. Absolutely great. Only problem is when it's really hot, of course, you got your UV rays baking in, and there is no tint on this car whatsoever. None. Absolutely none. <clears throat> this spring, I hopefully will be putting on, uh, getting 20% put on all the way around, 
and I'll probably tint the windshield to about 80% just for the extra UV protection with the dash and everything. Um, it'll also help pre, uh, being that it's all, I, I want to put ceramic on the car and have the window tint be ceramic, it'll really help with uh, how quickly the car heats up and cools down in the winter in the in the winter and summer too. But anyway, back to what I was saying about that back window. This car is completely fine driving wise. Like right now, I could take my sweatshirt off. It's about probably now that we're coming into town here into Omaha. It's probably about 50 degrees out with all the concrete. So it probably works pretty well. And it, it just, if I were to, I'm not even running the AC right now. I've just got it in its lowest setting, 65, and the fan set at medium. That is completely fine. However, once you get to about, I'm going to say upper, upper 80s to not anything above upper 80s, it's just, it's just no fun. Absolutely no fun. I mean, it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. I love driving this car. And I will as long and as much as I can. However, the issue then becomes, because there's no tint on this car, uh, the, the sun, the UV rays just bake this car. And I know if you've watched my last video, you've probably seen the, when I went over the car, I showed the cover for the sun visor and how that was all black and everything. Well, underneath whatever that wrapping is, that's door trim color, underneath that is just metal. So when that heats up, it's obviously going to get hot and it burns whatever that material is and just chars the crap out of it and makes it turn, gets real hard and then just really black and brittle and it looks ugly. So eventually when I get the window tip put on, I'm going to have that fixed as well clean the interior up just a little bit. We'll make it look a little bit nicer, not so sun beaten or worn down. That was a huge pothole. Holy crap. Um, but yeah, so, and again, that's, that was a donk Mustang. I don't know if the camera caught that, but it was blue. Donk Mustang. Ne okay. Well, first time for everything, I guess. Back to the five things that I dislike. So, I believe we left off at number three. So, number four here is going to be the placement of the oil filter. Now, <clears throat> I have worked on and changed oil in several different cars. Uh, when I was back home, like I said, my parents have always had uh, Toyotas. Um, I've got two of them. I've got my daily driver, and then obviously that car is a weekend, kind of take out on the weekends type of car. Um, so I have, and then all the, the car or two that I've had before that, <clears throat> that I've changed oil in and had the privilege to work on a couple times and fix up and <clears throat> basic maintenance. Um, the oil filter on that car, on the Supra, is really hard to get to. Um, it's kind of, and I'll have to, I'll see if I can find some pictures of it to show you guys what I mean. For those of you who haven't looked under a Mark III at all or recently, it's a huge pain. Uh, really, really difficult to get to. The last time I changed oil on it, I had to use uh, extensions on my wrench to actually have uh, a little bit of play side to side so I could actually bend the wrench around. Oh, I forget what was there. It's been a little while since I've changed oil, but I actually had to use extensions to bend it around to actually get a good contact on the filter itself to change to take off and then obviously putting the new one on was the biggest problem because you got it 
thread it back up in there with your arm, and it, I felt like that meme when that guy's drizzling salt on his forearm. Felt like that trying to twist the, uh, felt like that trying to twist the new uh, oil filter on. So uh, it definitely did take a lot longer. It was definitely a lot longer of a process than what I had wanted, but I was able to get it done. The fifth and final dislike of a 1989 Mark III Toyota Supra. Now, this one isn't necessarily a pet, or this one isn't necessarily a dislike so much as it is a unanswered question that I have had since I got the car. Now, number five, the two piece drive shaft. So, <clears throat> haven't had since I got the car. Uh, going back, I think in my one or two of my previous videos when I mentioned how I got the car, I actually uh, ended up mentioning that when I first bought the car and took it on the test drive, uh, we figured out that the hanger bearing, which is the bearing that goes between the two pieces to keep it supported and whatnot, it was actually loose and it was bad. It needed, needed to be replaced. So we had that done. It hasn't given me any problems since. However, uh, it's always been a question in the back of my mind as to why they put a two-piece drive shaft in instead of just a single uh, solid drive shaft. Uh, I know I could see them putting a two-piece in if it was a little bit higher of a horsepower car to maybe compensate for uh, twist in the frame and subframe under high excessive acceleration and cornering to help with cornering to kind of take some stress off the back end so you're not bending the uh, shaft at the back by the diff but I honestly can't think of any other reason as to why Toyota might put a two-piece in place of a sink or of where a two-piece drive shaft in place of something that you could just slap a single on and call it good. You know, I I to this day have no idea. Maybe it's a fact that it's a luxury sports car. So those are the four reasons and one big question that I've got on the. Mark III Supra. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like content like this, not like this, but like from the previous clips earlier in the video, and just info about the Mark III in general, and going to be doing some how-tos hopefully here pretty soon on how to install basic stuff for the car and upgrade it a little bit more. We get get a little bit more power out of it. Uh, Hit that subscribe button down below, uh, drop a comment if you have any questions uh, or just want to tell me anything. Uh, if you like this video and the content like this, drop a like and I will see you guys in the next video. Noah from Inline JDM signing out. Peace.